7700X fully tuned beat the 7800X 3D fully tuned in Star Citizen in our previous video. Now we're taking this beast of a CPU, pairing it up against the 1300K in the latest patch 3.21. The 1300K fully tuned with 8200MHz at CL36 patch over patch has been the number one CPU. However, every quarter when there's a new patch, there's so many changes going on in Star Citizen that we can't reuse previous results. So now, with patch 3.21, is the 1300K still the fastest CPU to use in Star Citizen? And as always, we begin with the low over run, it's been played in the background and we do this run 5 times to account for any run to run variants and the different servers you might get. All the settings are run at the highest and at 1080p. If you want to copy the settings, they're fully in the description below. And here we go, another 10% smoother on the 1% low compared to the 7000 700x and on average pretty much the same thing revealing the max fps tells a different story both the 7800x 3d and the 7700x outperforms the intel systems but if you were to run them side by side the intel system would just feel much smoother and that's revealed in 1% lows. Alright, moving on to area 18 which is playing in the background. If you want to copy this run then please pay attention as we're speeding this up. We are using CapFrameX and if you want to copy this run and share your result please do and leave your 1% lows, average and the 95% percentile which translates into the average 5% of the max FPS. Looking at the results on the 1% low, the 1300k barely beats the 7000 7700X. And when we reveal the top FPS, we can see that the 7700X beats in the system. And once again, the tuned 3D cache takes the lead on the high FPS. Taking a look at the Orison run is pretty straightforward. You just wait and go into the shuttle and stop the benchmarking. We reach all the way to the end just when the door opens. Looking at the results, the 39K it is neck and tie with the 7700X. There isn't really any noticeable difference there they both feel extremely similar once again revealing the top FPS the extra D cache beats everyone again and the 39k is tied with the 7700x in my previous video I said the 7700x felt like the 39k the results did not lie the 39k has marginal better performance this is because it has an overall lower latency thanks to its 8200 megahertz now 8200 megahertz memory speed is not an easy feat to achieve and therefore the 7700x is a clear winner here in Star Citizen. This means you can get a 3900K or a 1400K fully tuned kind of performance at a fraction of the price. This CPU will also fit in high-end and mid-range PC budgets. The value attuned to 7700X brings for Star Citizen is absolutely massive and I cannot wait until Zen 5 comes out where we can expect an additional 15% performance improvement over Zen 4. Until then, nothing else has changed. The only thing unoptimized is your PC. Bonus benchmark. Let's take a look at how it performs in Starfield. For those who are Star Citizen maximalists, you can look away now. For those who watch my Star field video, you would recall that we're using the PC gaming hardware's benchmarking ROM, Aquila, which is a city in Starfield which would be equivalent to Lorville, as it is also extremely CPU heavy and demanding. Starfield is a DirectX 12 game, which is Microsoft's equivalent to Vulkan, which could be a potential leading indicator of how these CPUs will perform in the future when Star Citizen upgrades fully to Vulkan. And what we can see is that the 7700X, when it's fully tuned, is positioned in between the 7800X 3D and the 12900K. However, if we look at the 1% lows, the performance is just above the 12900K with DDR5 at 6000 megahertz. But it falls short against the 7800X 3D when it's fully tuned. And then the 39K is still the champion here. So do you think this is the kind of performance profile we will see in Star Citizen as well? Where the 7800X 3D will take the lead over the 7700X, but then due to the Vulcan optimization the 300k taking the lead completely, maybe because you can leverage more of the e-course or what do you think? 
I will leave it at that. And if you like this kind of content, then please subscribe, like, and I'll see you in the next one.